Hey guys, it's Lion here with Hobbies and Man. Once again, and today we're going to be doing another single issue review. We're going to be looking at Ain't No Grave number four. And this is a pretty interesting issue. The team is the same as always. You know, Scotty Young with Jorge Corona and uh, Jean Francois. Uh, Bailu, I think is how you say his last name. I have no clue. Uh, and Nate Pecos as uh, the colorist and the letterer, uh, you know, uh, respectively. This is actually a really interesting issue because there's almost no words in this one. It's all vibes and music notes. And there's basically literally only two words spoken in the whole thing. And somehow it was a great read. And I think that that's amazing. I think Jorge Corona is doing a great job here, you know, getting us to visually understand what Scotty Young wants us to. And I think it's amazing. I think it's, it's really, really great work. So yeah, this is chapter four called Depression. Um, and it basically just leads us through this really slow walk that writer is going on. She's just, you know, rambling or, or um, shambling along, uh, trying to get to this abandoned saloon in this abandoned city as she's walking towards that, you know, uh, tower that she saw at the end of last issue, right? And she gets there and she drinks and she drinks and she drinks some more. And uh, this is mirrored with the night that she left on her journey, right? She's remembering the anger and the sadness and the, the need to do this that she had back then, right? And she continues to drink and uh, she gets angry and then she calms down and then she continues on her journey, right? And she keeps walking and walking and then suddenly she hears music, right? And this music leads her to these two people. She sees a girl out of the corner of her eye. She follows her. And this girl, well, young woman, leads her to this man with immensely long arms and bleeding fingers. And he's playing this guitar and he's sad and it looks like he's wailing. And the girl is also crying and they're both crying together. And then this wailing seems to get so loud that the, you know, arena, the area around them uh, starts to experience an earthquake. And this leads them to be, you know, uh, crumbled under the rubble, right? However, they're in like, you know, death already. They're, they're in the underworld. So I, it seems like she doesn't die. And eventually she makes it out of this rubble, right? And it seems like the other people are dead. Although I'm not really sure. And she makes it out alive. She crawls out. And then she continues on walking. She finds the same peddler as before, the one that let her come in, the one that is equivalent to like Chiron the, the ferryman, right? She gives him a ace card this time, right? I think it's an ace of spades. She gives it to him and then this tornado comes out of nowhere and takes her to a place. And this place is this kind of basic desert looking area and then death appears. And this is <laughs> really cool because it reminds me of the Shinigami from uh, Death Note. He has that same kind of like, like he's not scary, but he's not friendly kind of vibe to him that it looks really, really awesome. And the only thing he says is hello, writer. And that's where the issue ends. And this issue was one, very easy to read, obviously, because there's no words, but also immensely impactful. Like it felt so honest. And even though I didn't, you know, have any text to read, I felt like I was there. I felt very immersed in the story. And I think this is amazing. It also helps that because there's no text, just a lot of raw emotion, you can kind of put in whatever you want into it, right? So you can kind of feel that, you know, writer is, is sad as well, right? Or you can see that these people are sad because they're together, but they're alone, uh, you know, before the, the earthquake comes. Or you can see that they're like, you know, the, the guitarist that has bleeding fingers, is wailing because he has to kill the girl that's with him. Or, you know, it could be any number of things. There's a lot more interpretation available here. And that makes it so that this is a much more impactful issue. It's also gonna make it interesting because there's gonna be maybe some debate about how this stuff goes because of that nebulousness. And I think that that's cool. It adds a certain element to the story, right? So yeah, besides that, there really isn't too much to say. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was great. I'm loving this story a lot. I'm gonna revisit it next year uh, when uh, June on the Range comes back again. I think it's going to be cool to read this all in one go and, and do a review for the whole story instead of just issue by issue, right? So yeah, 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. So see you guys later.